So I want to break down a story of an iPhone that Apple hasn't made quite yet. I do want to give a prerequisite or like a little disclaimer. There is a lot of time for Apple to still make this iPhone, but this was, I guess, one of the more conflicting devices Apple was thinking about making. Then they stopped making apparently. Then they are remaking it again, which is insane. And this is the iPhone SE 4 or the iPhone SE 2024 or whatever iPhone you want to call it. Basically, it might even come out in 2025. Now, with this type of iPhone, this was going to be that successor to the iPhone SE 3. And I think that was a very, very, you know, interesting thing what Apple was thinking. They were going to drop another iPhone on us, which was going to be cool. It was going to be, I guess, that cheaper model. And I think those types of things are really cool for Apple to make. But the issue at hand was that Apple was pretty much, I guess, conflicted because their sales of their iPhone SE 3 weren't really doing that well. So they were in this somewhat like limbo phase of, you know, are they going to make it? Are they not? Can they even make an iPhone like that? And I think after the, you know, couple of iPhone drops that have happened with the iPhone 13 and iPhone 14, they've noticed that their sales of their pro and more expensive iPhones are actually doing pretty well. So that puts these types of iPhones like the iPhone, you know, SE 3, iPhone SE 4 in a weird spot for Apple. But in my opinion, the iPhone SE 4 could have been one of the better iPhones Apple has ever made, maybe not the best ones, but if this was an iPhone that looked kind of like the iPhone 12, but it had the latest generation chipset of either the A16 or A17 or whatever the latest one is, you know, at that time, I think that could have been a great selling iPhone, especially if it was at $499. If they were able to make that type of iPhone at that price tag in particular, like at, you know, $499, that would have been an insane price to pay for that type of device. It looks beautiful to me. And for a lot of people, they would probably be completely okay with paying maybe $499 for that type of device, which again, like I mentioned, is a very good price to pay for an iPhone that has a Super Retina XR OLED display that's built extremely well, that has a pretty decent battery life, and that has a latest chipset and has a way better camera and a way bigger difference coming from the iPhone SE 3 and it supports 5G, like that would have been a crazy iPhone that a hundred, so many units of those things would have sold, maybe not hundreds of millions, but lots and lots of units of that iPhone would have probably have sold. But Apple, I guess, was conflicted because if they made an iPhone like this, would it cannibalize sales of the iPhone 14, 15, 16 in the future? And that's definitely a very interesting take than something that Apple has to keep in mind. But so far, they haven't made this iPhone. There's not really been too many news and developments about this device, you know, in recent times. But I do think there's going to be a time where this type of, you know, iPhone is going to be made. And I think it's going to be amazing. But so far, they haven't made it. And maybe they'll never make it. But it's definitely going to be one of the better iPhones if Apple ever chooses to actually go down that direction. So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up there. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, till then.